Groundwater remains the main source of drinking water for Zambians, with an estimated 3.4 million people relying on boreholes today compared to 1.2 million in 2002. Demand for boreholes is growing. There are 365 registered drilling companies in the country and the government is starting to regulate. The country has uh, issued the statutory regulations on um, drilling in this country as well as licensing of drillers. There was a lot of wanton drilling, unregulated drilling, uh, poor standards, uh, all sorts of bad things in the drilling sector. But with this law, we are now moving in a direction where we are going to uh, standardize our practices. However, even with regulations in place, there is still a lack of effective drilling supervision as well as a limited understanding on how to effectively procure and manage drilling contracts. All over the country and all over Africa, the landscape you find is dotted with uh, non-functional boreholes. And some of this can be attributed to poor drilling, which is again as a result of poor supervision or lack, the entire lack of supervision. Most of the boreholes were not being supervised. You find that the, the, the driller, when they go to drill, they used to, to, to do it on their own without uh, being supervised. As a result, you find a lot of uh, boreholes not functioning, especially in the rural areas. All over Africa, and in Zambia also, the drilling supervision is seen as uh, an extra cost. It's not seen as a necessity. It's indisputable that drilling supervision is essential. It's not an extra cost. It's an essential part of the whole process because what happens is if there isn't professional supervision, the quality is not the same. There is, there's, there's literally probably tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands and hundreds of millions of dollars wasted because of lack of supervision. If you do a problem analysis in terms of uh, the way uh, balls uh, break down, you can't just put the blame on the drillers. Even as supervisors, we need to have certain knowledge, so at least the right things can be done. The rate at which our balls are breaking down is actually very high. Out there in rural areas, people need a lot of water. But I find that you, you, you spend a lot of money constructing a boho, but within one year, two years, they break down. So you spend more time again repairing boreholes. So you're not going anywhere. These developments, coupled with the challenges, prompted UNICEF Zambia and SCAT Foundation in collaboration with the Zambian government to run a five-day comprehensive training course. It was aimed at professionalizing borehole drilling and management throughout the country. The participants comprised engineers, geologists, planners, technicians, and social scientists from government, non-governmental organizations, and the private sector. Uh, the intention of this training is uh, to improve capacity or to raise capacity of the different players in the white sector to be able to manage and provide boreholes that are more sustainable. And for us to have facilities sustainable, we need to have people who are better skilled to manage and support the provision of services. It's a whole cycle. In fact, this is coming at the right time because with the introduction of the SI, uh, the social instrument by WAMA, it now sits very well because that SI is, among other things, looking at it quality boreholes, but you can only have quality boreholes if we have proper supervision. And that proper supervision can only be achieved if people, supervisors are well trained. The quality of the product is almost as good as the quality of the supervision. And uh, once uh, we have people who can enforce and ensure that things are done properly, uh, that uh, we shall see an increase in successful boreholes, and therefore we shall also see an increase in the benefits that derive from having uh, uh, improve water supplies in our communities. This drilling supervision course is it's, uh, it's one of the things we've been wanting to do for quite some time. Uh, basically, because we have been supporting the government to uh, to, to provide uh, water in the rural areas, and um, the provinces and districts are responsible to do the, the planning, the monitoring, implementation, and the actual uh, supervision of the of the contractors. And now, with the passing on of the groundwater regulations, it's important to ensure that there are 
the drilling meets the specifications of the government and uh, the rules laid down by the regulation. The first part of the course involved classroom work to better understand groundwater and to discuss the principles of cost-effective boreholes and borehole drilling supervision. We started on day one trying to go to the, through the principles of, uh, of uh, cost-effective supervision and we went also on to try to understand the nature of groundwater without too much jargon because some of the participants have, had, have no technical background and so we had to keep it simple. And then we tried again to teach them to, to, to share experience on what we actually mean by the principles of cost-effective boreholes. The classroom session was followed by three days of practical work where the participants were taken through the actual process of on-site supervision using the supervisor's checklist and learning from the trainers. Okay, so far we started from the basics of trying to look at uh, uh, who is a boho supervisor mm -hmm. and how does that boho supervisor differ from a drilla? We looked at the roles and responsibilities of the boho supervisor. Mm -hmm. From there we looked at what you need for you to be able to supervise. For example, you need a checklist, you need to have the knowledge of what you're looking for. You also need to uh, understand the fact that you need to work with other people. So we went through the process involved in drilling and further we looked at the process involved in uh, development and the, even up to the end, that is uh, casing and also uh, the construction. At every stage we looked at the standards, those that are allowed here in Zambia and the world over. Practical exercises included boho design and modification, concentrating on aspects of where to place the screen, installation of casing and screen, gravel packing and boho development. The last day of field work focused on the placement of the sanitary seal, pumping test, boho completion, water quality testing, and boho disinfection. To go through, we had a checklist of things to check, to look for uh, in drilling supervision. So we actually brought a drilling rig and crew, and you know, we have gone through the process of drilling a borehole, and the, the participants have gone through every step of, of, of drilling. So I'm hoping that uh, with that, they have actually had both the theoretical and practical experience. Tomorrow, we shall be going to do an inspection of, of an existing hole, mm -hmm. which are also essential skills that uh, a supervisor should have. So I'm hoping that by that, by the end of the course, we'll have gone through the broad spectrum of all that is involved in uh, uh, drilling supervision. Finally, the participants were brought back to the classroom to solidify the lessons of the week, which were to understand the importance of effective supervision in boho construction for sustainability, understand the steps and detailed actions required in full-time and part-time or milestone supervision, and last but not least, to be able to quality assure and certify drilling records. Just because an organization owns a rig does not necessarily mean they can drill uh, cost-effective boreholes. So from this training, we will know how we can select drillers to give us cost-effective boreholes, and especially if we combine it with good uh, supervision. As a supervisor, I need to be there at every stage of borehole designing for me to certify that this borehole will be cost-effective borehole for the community. The fact that um, knowledge is being impacted, that will give me confidence to stand even to a driller because I know about the formations, I have the knowledge of a geologist. One thing about the driller, a driller doesn't know that we are sitting on an unconfined aquifer or semi-confined, but for them they just want water to be there. But me understanding that and the training that I'm getting right now, that is improving knowledge in me and also building the confidence that I'm able to stand to a drill and say, oh, look, this is not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to do it in this way. Because it's not just about providing water, but providing good water to people. Our projects have been implemented sometimes at a very 
high and justifiable costs just because we have not been able to effectively supervise uh, these projects. But uh, from the course, I've learned that uh, value for money will only and uh, effectively be realized if we have a supervisor who is well trained. He can be an engineer, he can be an hydrologist, but uh, for him to effectively supervise these projects, he needs to have the knowledge and take and know how to do that. What the training has, has actually done, it has been able to distinguish the, the, the various roles and responsibilities between a driller and a supervisor. And we've been able to get the actual understanding what a supervisor should do and what a supervisor should ensure that the driller is, is doing in terms of following what is laid down, the specifications, and everything. So there's that relationship between the supervisor and the driller. To understand drilling supervision is not monitoring, turning up on site occasionally to see what they're doing. Drilling supervision is a process where you have to have someone trained on site throughout the process and if that doesn't happen then there will be a decline in quality and sustainability. For such a course to bring about change in the country it was important to get the right participants on board. These are people who expect to manage or supervise drilling projects in the next 12 to 18 months. It is also expected that the participants will begin to cascade the training to their staff and colleagues. This will continue for all the districts, but this is a starting point, uh, whereby even our colleagues that are being trained now will act as trainer of trainers who will go in turn to train our other colleagues that are not able to be with us. Here. We shall have a team of TOTs from this team who will actually support the other districts or the province can do its own course and we hope now we will be getting more better balls, what we call cost effective balls because they have actually done everything which is supposed to be done and long lasting balls. My take home is to ensure that what we have been taught and what we have taught should be practiced. So when I go out for monitoring and evaluation of various projects, I will ensure that uh, what we have been taught is being done and that the supervisors who have trained go out there and practice what they have been taught and also go further and teach their peers. I've learned that there's a cost attached to bore supervision. And I should confess that for the past five years I've supervised, maybe I was just doing monitoring instead of the actual full-time supervision. So I'll go to the council and ensure that the executives, even before they are trained, I try to bring in an aspect of budgeting for full balls per vision for us to have cost-effective balls. Going forward, what I'm taking away is that uh, from uh, the ministry headquarters, we're going to continue to ensuring that every project which is designed, there must be substantial resources for supervision. And that will be followed with the us ensuring that the districts and also other implementers use those funds for that intended purpose because we have seen that with the poor or no supervision, whatever we are doing may not last. And apart from that, it will also be very important that uh, even ourselves, the, the implementers at district level should be able to convince the, their superiors that when we send money for supervision, it, be, it must be used for that purpose, otherwise this training will be of no use if we cannot implement it. As the participants take their next steps after the training and begin to contribute to the professionalizing of groundwater development in Zambia, they will also be contributing to the overall goal of ensuring improved access to safe drinking water. In terms of public health, yes, so it's going to have an impact. You know, at the end of the day, we want to have uh, adequate and clean water supply. So if bowls are breaking down at a high rate, people will be forced to go back to and safe drinking water. So if we have uh, cost-effective bowls, bowls that can last a long time, people will be safe because they'll be drawing water from clean sources, at least for a long time. If you provide bowls that are more sustainable, it means that uh, access to water will actually be guaranteed. The access to water is going to be sustainable. That entails that the household in the rural community will have water all the time. With increased coverage in water supply 
uh, which also coupled with sanitation and hygiene, we should see some increase in the benefits that derive from uh, being free of waterborne diseases and other environmental diseases as a result of poor sanitation and hygiene.